Hi guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here now to do um, a little bit of finishing off projects and I'm working on this ring bound journal. Um, as you can see, I've got several pages already completed in it, but I then got waylaid and started making other things. Um, so it's now come to a grinding halt. So I thought I would resurrect this project and, you know, get cracking and finish some of the um, pages and put the junk journal together. So I've got my large rings here and I'm going to just do lots of the finishing touches um, and possibly one or two more pages. So if I just move out some bits. So first of all, if I kind of here where I've got these holes, I'm just going to pop the, um, what do you call the, <laughs> well, why do I always struggle with the name of that? Hole reinforcers. I always try <laughs> go to say page protectors the hole reinforcers. I'm just going to pop those there. I really like using those on the ring bound journals. I mean, to be perfectly honest, they're not really for, you know, reinforcing the holes when I use them. They're more for decorative purposes. I think they just look absolutely gorgeous. So I'm just going to pop those on like that. Just one or two of those pages, anywhere that just hasn't got them. I think I've probably done them on most of the pages, but there might just be one or two where I forgot. So, yep, it looks like they're pretty much on all of the pages, really. That one, I'm just going to, I'm just going to poke my um, pokey tool through there because you can probably see, but I've punched the hole and then I've obviously put doily over there. So I'm just opening the hole back up with the pokey tool rather than re-punching it because it didn't really need actually re-punching. I'm just going to lift my um camera up slightly because i'm not sure how the vision was so i'm just going to now sort of put my journal together in a way that hopefully you know is nice for the pages to go nicely together just check which way round i want that probably like that i think now i haven't obviously um decided what i'm going to use for a cover for this journal or anything like that um but we can obviously do that and then what I think I'm going to do is I always like to include some blank pages in my journal. And I mean, you've probably seen me do this before, but all I literally do is take some coffee dyed sheets of paper and just have them in here. So I'm just going to nip off and get some. Right, I'm back. I also grabbed some black card because I'm going to probably use that as my covers. So let's cut down the pages that we're going to use first. Oh, also, also found this lace, which I had purchased this lace and it was white and black. I've coffee dyed mine and doesn't it just look gorgeous now? And I thought, well, actually that's going to look fantastic with this journal. So I'm going to just get one of these pages to use as a sort of template really. Well, actually I don't need to use a template. Sorry, I, I will backtrack already. Um, so what I like to do for my pages in ring bound journals is I like to use quite thickish card. Now this is, I think, 200 GSM. It's all been coffee dyed and I'm just going to fold them all in half. That gives me a good guideline where to cut them down. So just grab my scissors. In fact, I'll cut them all and then I will, uh, sorry, fold them all and then cut them all. That's probably a bit more efficient. Um, and yeah, what I like to do is have these thicker pages because then when they're turning on the rings, if you use, you know, like regular copy paper, I mean, this is thicker than copy paper. I think this is maybe like 102 GSM, whereas regular copy paper would be about 80. It's just going to be quite flimsy on your rings, which, you know, that's fine. I mean, I'm quite a clumsy person, so you know probably normal people it would be fine for me personally I would feel slightly concerned that I'm going to actually tear the paper so for my blank pages I like to just put in you know pretty thick paper and then you know it's going to be kind of rigid and robust I also bought these envelopes over just in case I wanted to make the covers out of the envelopes so I'm just going to put those down out of the way and then all I'm going to do is just cut my pages obviously I could tear these because I have cut them down but I will just try and cut along oh my daughter has obviously been at my scissors with her sticky horrible stuff so I'm going to have to try and clean those off let me grab another pair of scissors honestly kids they just touch everything don't they everything's for them 
Okay, so I'm just going to cut these pages down. And, you know, again, I don't use a paper trimmer. I just use this line as the guide. I'm not too, too worried because what I will probably do, <laughs> she says, I will probably forget to do this, but I will probably have, you know, my cut line on the inside of the journal, where you know, next to the rings, where the rings are. So to be honest, if they're not quite 100% straight, no one's really going to see that because they're going to be tucked against, or, you know, into the rings. So you're not really going to see them. It's not like they're going to be on the outside edge where it's going to be really visible. So, you know, just straight enough. I mean, I just don't really like paper trimmers. I find them quite cumbersome and, um, you know, they're really big. Obviously my desk space is um, not the biggest and it's obviously jam packed full. Um, so yeah, for me, I think it's just easier to just do this really. Also, I'm not very good at being very accurate with a paper trimmer to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, I sometimes line the paper up wrong and things like that. So, you know, sometimes I can end up with worse worse attempts at straight lines than actually cutting them myself. So, I mean, they're, you know, they're pretty good now. And I'm just going to bring in my cropper dial. And then again, what I'm going to do is just take one of my pages to use as a sort of template. So I just line my pages up with that. Again, you know, up to you, you could clip it on. So perhaps I should, perhaps I should clip it on. Now I can't find a clip. This is going to be one of those days, I'm afraid. So I'm just going to use a paper clip. You know, that's that's good enough. I'm just, well, I said it's good enough. It actually didn't go through any of my pages, so that definitely wasn't good enough. Right, that's better now. And then just tuck it down so that your edges are all, you know, pretty neat. And then I'm just going to punch where the holes are. So that one there. Just poke my holies out of my crocodile now so that I can see again and then we just go in on the other holes on there and that's it and then if I move that one out the way I'll just move a couple of these out the way and then what I can do is line it up obviously with the rest of them just do it that way. line it up with the rest of them again just hold them with my paper clip here Again, just get my holes out and I can just oops well she says I can't really see I'm afraid in this light but <laughs> if you can manage to see you can obviously then just you know line your holes up oh no I can't see at all oh my gosh this is just not good right okay so hopefully they're hopefully lined up well enough now then I like to again just go through all of them with my hole reinforcers. I mean to be honest this for me is probably the most boring part of the you know the making of the journal is oh my glue's already playing up this is not not very good. Um, this is probably my most boring part of the making of the journal I've got to say but I do really like the look of those holes you know being reinforced with the ring things they just look pretty so they just add that extra bit I mean obviously oh gosh, obviously I have used quite thick card here so I mean my holes probably don't really need reinforcing as a you know precaution of how thick and robust they're going to be they don't probably need it but they do look much nicer for having it they look finished off whereas otherwise they just look a bit like you know punched whole paper which of course is what it is so we just well, let's pop those on like that we've got another incredibly hot day here and I know I mean you're all probably sick of hearing me say this yep I'm filming ahead so if it's not hot where you are and you're in the UK I'm not lying honestly it is hot while I'm filming this so it could be our weather has gone now and we're back to the usual cold, blowy, horrible, rainy weather. But today it's really hot. So again, I've got my windows open up here. So, wow, very noisy birds out there as well. So, yeah, just 
reinforce all of my holes and you know I do that back and front so I'll just move those to one side so again if I just line them up a bit like that I can kind of then just do them a bit more like a an assembly line so like that around all of them I mean I just use the glue because although these are self-adhesive you know labels the whole reinforcers I just always um, you know like to make sure that things are really glued down because I mean stickers they often sort of peel off after a while don't they so I'd rather go over the top by gluing these down as well than have them lifting because that's just horrible isn't it if then your you know your stuff starts lifting so I always think you know better off having things really well stuck down than not stuck well enough so there we go Okay, a couple more. Nearly done. Okay, I'll do the rest in slow time because I'm sure you don't want to sit and watch me do. I've I've used five pages, i.e. five pieces of paper. So obviously now they're cut in half. I've got ten, you know, ten pages worth. Um, so I'll do these in slow time so that you're not having to just watch me do that because of course that's you know, not very interesting and then what I like to do is normally just do some sort of stamping or something to have it just in keeping with the rest of the junk journal and um, you know just have it a bit more interesting than just blank pages I might put some lace on or something I mean again these are all things that you've probably seen me do you know a hundred times so I'm just going to cut some of this lace off because I just think this just is, you know, really awesome for this journal. It's just perfect, isn't it? I, you know, couldn't have come out any better, to be honest. And I'm just going to check that my fabric tack's not clogged up now. Fabric tack's pretty good. It doesn't tend to get clogged, does it? But it has been sat there for a couple of days now, so. Yeah, it's very, very hot, I must say. It's kind of about 32, so um, I've got my windows open. Everywhere in the whole house. Okay. And, you know, just randomly stick a few things on. I mean, you know, basically I'm just trying to give it some decorative... Um, aesthetics I suppose just so it doesn't look completely rubbish and boring when you flick through so I like to just try and add you know things randomly so what I'll do I'll just cut another bit of lace but I won't have it right next to that one I'll put it you know maybe on the last one or something so that I've got you know different pieces at different places maybe we'll have that piece at the top trying to see which is the right way round and the wrong way round of the lace I think actually it's better this way. Okie dokie. So I hope everyone's having a good day. Do you like ring bound journals? I I really like them. I know that I've said this again a billion times, but I really like the ring bound journals because they give you loads of flexibility. Um, you know, because obviously you can move things around lots of times and things like that. Now I've got my label stamp here, so I might just stamp this maybe even directly onto the page. So again, let me just take my black stays on. Yeah, I think they give you a lot of flexibility and, um, you know, I like the fact that you can change the pages around to, you know, get a good sort of match and things where you want them. And um, I like the fact that, you know, you can really go to town with your embellishments because, of course, they can really grow pretty fat, can't they? And you don't have to be kind of too worried. I might put a stamp on here. And then maybe one down there. Okay. Maybe a bit of my fab. A uh, fancy corner that I absolutely love using. So perhaps we'll have a bit of a fancy corner down by that little bit as well. And then 
just a bit here, I think. Yeah, I know that I've said recently as well about um, altered books and I do really love doing altered books as well. And for some reason, I've not done one for absolutely ages now. And it's on my list of things to do. I mean, I've got loads of projects that are half finished and I'm, I'm going to make a sweeping statement that will turn out to just be completely not true. Um, but I'm kind of determined to try and get on top of all my projects, you know, finishing off things before I start anything else. Already as I say that, but I'm just thinking that's just completely not going to happen because already I've got other projects <laughs> lined up in my mind that I'm, you know, dying to start. So that's just, yeah, not really true. But yeah, I do want to do an altered book quite soon because um, I do like doing them. And yeah, it's a really long time since I've done one. I'm trying to even think what the last altered book that I did was, I can't think. Okay. Oops. So just, you know, some decorative details really, just here and there. Okay, right. Might put a little bit of lace just on the bottom of here as well. So again, just take some of that gorgeous lace. Honestly, I really love how this has turned out with the coffee dye and it just looks so good. Oh, now I'm not sure where to have this. And I could even have it in there for a complete, a complete change. And perhaps I'll have it at the top as well. This is, I think, on the other side of where I've got it on the top, at the, at the top on the other page, but that's fine. Right, again, just checking which way round the lace needs to go. Okay, yeah, I've got lots of um, ideas at the moment whirring around my head, but in my, you know, in my other side of my brain, I suppose, maybe the logical side, I'm saying, no, don't start anything else. Finish off what you've got on your desk already. So, yeah, I should really get on and do that, but it's just a case of, uh, you know, there's so many things to finish that now my boredom threshold will finish, uh, will kick in before I've got round to half of the projects, I'm sure. So, And then what I do is I just like to slot the pages in, just, you know, wherever I sort of think that they might be nice. So maybe here I will just put them. And then, I mean, I tend to normally put them all in the same place. But, of course, there's no rules, so, you know, that's not a... 100% they have to go in the same place you can you know mix them up and put them wherever you fancy and then for my covers what I'm going to do is just take I've got this black card I've had this for yonks and I had quite a lot of it it was from a um uh, what do you call them like a scrapbook type thing um so these are going to make good covers now they're pretty well I was going to say they're pretty thin they're the cardstock but they're not the thickest. They're maybe like, I don't know, 230 GSM, something like that. So what I want to do is glue them together. So what I'm going to do in the first place is try and, you know, make them a sort of size that I roughly would like them. So if I just take this page here, now I like my covers overhanging slightly. So, you know, that's again, not a hard and fast rule, but I'm going to cut this one at a time, otherwise I'm going to end up with very jaggedy edges. Um, that's not a hard and fast rule, but, you know, in an ideal world, I think most of the time it's quite nice to have a little bit of extra leeway on your covers because, um, you know, then your pages kind of slot inside better. So that's just a very rough cover. I'm going to be really ruthless and I'm going to throw that away. I know it could be useful and probably even now as I'm throwing it, I'm thinking of a couple of things I could have used it for. But to be honest, I need to stop with the hoarding and, um, you know, just say goodbye to some things, to be honest. Right. So all I'm going to do is glue these together. Like that.
and this I think will make quite a nice cover because it will have that nice squishy feel I do love the squishy feel of um, soft sort of covers to be honest I think they you know they look well I think they look really nice and I think they feel really nice so um, yeah this will hopefully give us that lovely squishy feel that you know is really lovely so just pressing that down again I could use my my card spreader oh no that's missing from my drawer now I know only a few weeks ago I said I'm going to try and get on top of my mess didn't I and be less less scatty but it's obviously not really panned out that way so right just going to now cut the second piece you know in line with this that. And then what I'll do is use this obviously as like a template for my back covers. So again, just take that there and just chop that down. I mean, again, it's not perfectly straight. I really don't mind because, you know, by the time that I've covered this and, you know, it's got holes punched, it's got some lace and some fabric and things like that, it's just not going to be noticeable at all. Well, hopefully. Hopefully it's not going to be noticeable at all. So, you know, don't worry too much if your pieces aren't dead straight because, honestly, by the time that they've been decorated up and, you know, all of the rest of it, you're really not going to notice too much. I mean, of course you would if they were just left plain and that edge was on the outside, but you know, if they're going to be decorated up and that edge, chances are, is going to be on the inside, i.e., you know, the ring side, then you're really not going to notice at all. Right, sorry, I'm just unclogging my glue again. We just have these good days and bad days with glue, I think, so. Today is obviously a bad day. So again, just go around. Please. Hello, gorgeous. I love you, darling. Okay, right, we're going to go around here like this. Oops. Sorry, my glue is now falling over on the desk. Right. So again, just spread that out. Obviously it would be better if I had my glue, you know, my, my gift card essentially. Um, but yeah, I don't know where it is. So I'm just going to do this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just wondering whether I could actually fold this over and make this a pocket running down ways on that page so let me just try and get it straight on the page okay so I'm just going to trim that down like that oops oh my gosh that's horribly not straight I must say I'm not sure that's a lot better, but never mind. Okay, now because I haven't worked on this journal for a little while, I actually can't really remember much of what I was doing in here. So I'm just going to sort of have another look, just a bit of a refresh of the colours and things like that that I was using. I mean, obviously it's predominantly black and, and white, um, but I've used some browns and things like that. So I just wanted to kind of have a double check because... You know, it's hard to remember always what you've been doing when you've taken a, you know, a little breather from a project. You know, it's hard to then get back straight into it. So, under my desk, I've got this sheet of scrapbook paper. If I just call this in, I think that's going to go quite well, actually. With some of the pages that I've used in the journal. So... I'm thinking I could cover my back cover in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it here. That's so that I know roughly 
where to cut that. I'm trying to be a bit frugal, a little bit frugal and, um, you know, not waste the paper. So just going to cut along there. And let me just check that I'm going to make this the right length for height. So again, just use that like a bit of a template and just chop that down like that. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is pop that right, in there. So what I'm going to do is tuck that into there and then that's, you know, quite a good way to do that page. And, you know, it's got that scrap bit piece of paper off of my floor. That piece of scrapbook paper has been on my floor for a really long time. <laughs> Again, it was more that I was hoarding and actually there's a couple of other sheets that also coordinated with that same pack. I couldn't tell you what pack it was, I'm afraid, because I'd had it for a really long time and it's no longer in the pack. You know, I've torn the pages loose. And um, yeah, as I say, it's just been like stuck under my desk for forever, really. So I'm just gluing that on like that. Okay, and just spread that out. Oops, like that. So sorry, my desk is just, oh, oh, such a tip. And obviously we're doing our tidy Friday now. So um, yeah, you would have thought it would be getting a bit better, wouldn't you? But of course, so far, as I'm filming this anyway, so far I've only tidied little areas of my room. I haven't actually moved on to the desk at all. So of course it's not really made a blind bit of difference to my actual workspace, but but hopefully it will eventually. Right, so just chopped that down. Now obviously you can see it's still horribly crooked, so, or wonky. Just going to try and neaten that up a little bit. Okay, right. So that's that piece of paper which looks quite good on there and then now what do I want on this side again I'm trying to just use lots of things that are laying about so if I bring this in just wondering whether I could use that and then layer up some sort of black and ivory and things like that so I think I'm going to do that you know it's really good to get these things off of my desk really so again just going to and actually I'm just thinking I'm probably better off gluing this whole pocket flap down so I'm just going to go and I've gone along the crease just in case that's you know a vulnerable point and likely to um, tear the paper so that's the only reason I've done that now I'm just going to go round have to be a bit careful, I didn't really think that out, did I? Because that's got those holes, so. But I'm not too worried about those because I'm probably going to add some lace or, you know, some sort of trim down there, so. Oh gosh, again. Again, my glue needs a bit of unclogging. I know I've said this so many times before, but honestly, you get just these odd bottles that are pro uh, problematic and, you know, you can have really good bottles for ages and ages and then suddenly you get one after another where they're just not great. So I hope I haven't gone down the not great time again. Right, so I'm just going to pop that there, like that. Again, I could really do with my spreader. So just then pop that down. Now this is on, I think, copy paper. So, you know, it's not particularly thick. So I might have some lumps and bumps, but again, I'm not too worried because I mean, I will probably decorate this up and you know, a lot of it will be covered up anyway now. So there we go. Right, let's just cut around. Okay. Okay, now I haven't decided how I'm going to decorate the front and back covers. I don't know whether I'm going to cover it with fabric or paper or, you know, a combination. I'm not quite sure yet. So 
yeah I'm kind of still debating on those if I'm doing in paper I probably should do that now because of course then that's going to be um, easier before this gets too lumpy and bumpy I've got to be honest and say I will probably do it with fabric yeah I think I'm probably going to do it with fabric so I probably don't really need to worry right so just flipping this back over and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to obviously ink it but also I've got a whole bunch of sheet music so let me just grab some in Okay, so I've got some sheet music now and this one as you can see is very, you know, that gorgeous, gorgeous colour inside. Um, this one not so much, this is a little bit more, you know, ivory coloured. So again, I'm thinking I do love the brownie shade one, but again when I'm looking through the pages I don't think I've necessarily used that type of thing in the other pages and, you know... <laughs> That to me then feels I shouldn't really be using that if I haven't used it in other places. So I'm just going to tear this down and we'll just then, you know, have a little bit somewhere, somewhere on this page. So let's just, in the first instance, let's just tear this down. Thinking we could have it maybe here now I've got this lady she's just floating around on my desk so you know I always just love it when I just happen to find things floating about because they just sometimes feel like yep that's the piece you know that was just meant to go there because it was it was calling me so I'm just going to do that okay and it's always great when you can use a few things from your desk isn't it so uh you know, double feel good there. Not only have I, you know, felt like it was calling to be placed on there, but also I've used something else off my desk. I know, drop in the ocean. Really not making a blind bit of difference, but as quick as I've used her, something else will be on the desk. Okay. So I'm going to have her there. Now again, I'm thinking I'm going to use some more of this lace because this lace, obviously, I hadn't um, coffee dyed when I was using, you know, when I was working on the rest of the journal. So obviously, I haven't really used this lace anywhere else so far. So it would be quite good to actually incorporate a little bit of this, I think, somewhere other than just on those plain pages. So I'll just, again, sort of pull that around a bit. That could probably go there. I'm wondering about her there now. The other thing that I am wondering whether I could use, let's just pull them in, is where we've made our little clusters. <clears throat> I wonder if I've got any that are, I mean, that's not a bad colour. All, all of the others are quite coloured actually, but this one's not too bad, so I could use that. And I forgot about my strips. Uh, the creative cafe girl inspired strips so again I'm going to just bring one of those in I think so yeah now I've also got that one just having a look through because these are the ones that I made on video a little while back but they're just going to be perfect and actually I'm just going to bring in another one because I might just pop one or two on some more of those plain pages. Things like this are just perfect for just decorating up, you know, odd little spots, I think. So, right, let's have a look now we've pulled in some other bits. Okay, right, I'm going to ink up the page because it's surprising how different things look once they're inked up, to be honest, because at the moment it's not really, you know, feeling very vintagey or anything. But once you ink it up, of course, everything then starts coming together and it all, you know looks a lot better uh what else i've got <laughs> i managed to buy you know my fantastic swirly stamp this my favorite swirly stamp so i just happened to be looking for something else on ebay and i came across a small version so let me show you this is it it's obviously arrived just well yesterday 
I've only used it once just to try it out but it's exactly the same stamp but oh about a third of the size or something and it's called indigo blue vintage flourish which is the name of the other one but I lost the packaging um, and it's called dinky so it's the dinky version of the indigo blue vintage flourish stamp thank you um, sorry my husband just bought me a cup of tea um, so let's try that one and stamp that on here so again I've got my black stays on and what I'll do is just stamp this off on some book page first check it's you know looking good and obviously with my big one I just tend to use portions of the um, you know flourish but this one obviously being much smaller I can kind of use the whole flourish now I just have to bear in mind it's going to be that way up so yeah need to be a little bit more careful in my placement of it so perhaps I'll have it here and then a bit here oh that's so gorgeous yep now I have them in two different sizes you see so I just can't get enough of this stamp honestly I mean I've had it for years and I say all the time but I just think sometimes you get things and you just love them like forever and that's going to be me and that stamp. I'm going to love it forever. Right, so we've got that there. Now, do we want to have a little bit of this um, trim just off at the side? It's quite nice, isn't it? And then my lace trim, just deciding how I want to sort of edge the page off, really. So the other pages, by the looks of things, just having a sip of my tea. The other pages I have used this wide lace trim and I've cut it down. So let me just take some of that, you know, off of like the gathered header piece. Let me just trim that down. Just wondering, do I want that there or is that a bit too dismal we could have some of this paper trim like over the top of the lace which just lifts it slightly or actually is that calling for it needs some brighter brighter colored lace or possibly even some of this this coffee dyed lace running down the edge Oh, decisions, decisions. I'm not sure now. Obviously, I have got this, which, you know, not sure. Let me bring the black back in. Yeah, already I'm thinking clearly I'm not going to finish off projects before starting some other things because um, I'm excited. I'm excited to start some other some other different things so that's just not going to work at all you know I can tell myself you know with the best will in the world that I'm going to be really good and not start anything else and get any other supplies out but I just yeah I'm going to fail miserably with that so there's no point really no point pretending might as well be truthful with myself and admit that you know I'm just going to be getting other things out right I'm just wondering whether actually what I need to do is brighten up this background paper because it's actually you know it's quite dark so I feel like it needs a little bit of lifting from the page so let me just bring in my box of scraps now just having a bit more tea got this script tea Most of this is a bit coloured to be using, so I don't want to have coloured pieces on my neutrally, you know, black and white book. Um, let's try, let's try that. Get rid of that 
sort of white core that we've got in there. why this page is not coming together really but for some reason it's just it's not working for me now I'm wishing I'd not used that scrapbook paper oh well it will come together eventually and then you know hopefully it will just suddenly work right let me just bring in one or two more pages and just sort of get some more inspiration of what I've been doing so far because I haven't touched this for weeks it's really hard to just go back and sort of pick it up and not have it look like you've done it on a completely different <laughs> week, you know. Um, it won't then flow properly, so. Right, okay. Okay, so. Oh, decisions, decisions. Right, I'm going to stick the, um, uh, sheet music down and I think I'm going to stick the script down because I'm pretty confident with those Oops. let me just pop those two down and of course I'm going to ink them up so you know then they'll tie in even better and I have this one Oops, excuse the back obviously it's where I've been printing lots of different things when I'm trying to get my printables, you know, just how I want them. Oops. Okay, so we've got that one like that. Now, why is this not working? I don't know why it's not working. Maybe the heat's getting to me, I don't know. So maybe this lady's not really working for me. Um, I don't know why she wouldn't be, but maybe it's her. So I might bring in my little box of ephemera pieces and we'll have a look through there. Let's have a look. Okay. Sorry, my tea is in the way. Right. I've got, got a little frame. I'm pulling out things that are just natural or neutral, neutral colours. Um, you know, not saying I'm necessarily going to use them, but just sticking with the neutrally theme here. Okay. Right, so we've got a few things here. Got some more of those Tim Holtz paper dolls. Oh, we need more of them, in fact, here. Okay, right, well that's a few to be getting started with, isn't it? So, we can pop that back down. Okay, right. Let's see if any of these are going to look better than this lady. Right, now straight away, for some reason, that looks to me, you know, instantly better anyway. Right, I've finished my cup of tea now, so you'll be pleased to know that's now off of the <laughs> off of the uh, the desk, so it's one less thing on here. Just going to double check. Well, isn't that really strange? Because actually, both of these instantly to me look better than this lady did. Why is beyond me? But I actually quite like her. I think. I'm just going to double check that I haven't got her all over the place throughout the journal already. Again, just because it's ages since I'm working on it, I wanted to check that she's not kind of like, you know, everywhere all over the journal already. That wouldn't probably be very good. Right, so I might have her like that. That's really nice. Yep, I really like how that looks. So just going to pop this down. Not sure really whether there's a right or a wrong side to this, but. down like that and that helps a bit you know do you remember I had the holes under there 
like the punched holes in the edge so that just helps with those holes as well so you know that's really good and then I'm going to have her there yeah I love how she looks now we could even just stick her down so she's a bit of a pocket again you know might not use her as a pocket but by putting her in as a pocket it just gives you that option which of course if you just glue her in you know flat on the page you don't have that option at all so it's always good always good to have options isn't it okay right love how she looks really really nice so now I just want to finish this off by deciding which lace to have on here and I could still have my little clustery piece which actually I could have that there that's really nice and then which lace do I want do I want this lace or is this like a little bit heavy so it's going to be next to this page Mm -hmm. That might be a bit heavy, I think. So let me just bring in this. I don't think I've got any more black ruffles, which is a shame because actually the black ruffles would probably look best of all. I need to um, to make some more. Oh, perhaps I'll have that. Yep, I love it like that, I think. So that's all I'm going to do is just pop this one down here. I will just hot glue this on because that's just nice and fast like that I don't think that's been inked up even so just ink that up a bit and I'm just going to just reinforce that because it's just held with a staple just giving it a bit of a helping hand to make sure it's all going to stay stay in place okay and then for my lace trim just going to run some glue straight down that edge and just pop the glue down there okay like that and it's just overhanging a bit it's not you know really overhanging the edge but just a little bit so and then I'm just going to trim that off just make sure it's stuck down oops it looks like it's or it feels like it's moving a bit so I'm just going to pop some more glue underneath that maybe my glue didn't really come out there so much as I thought can't really see to be honest in this light whether it's actually even coming out at all so hopefully, hopefully that's a bit better now. I'll just put a little bit down here. Okay. Oh, gorgeous. Yep, I really love how that looks now. So, yep, all I've got to do now is obviously punch a couple of holes in here and then obviously I've got my pocket, you know, that I can just tuck some ephemera in there. So, love how that looks and... Um, yeah really 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 nice so i hope that you um you know got something out of that video um and hope that you um you know enjoy it if you do a ring bound journal and thank you so much for joining me hopefully you'll join me again next time thanks then